Hey guys, it is Tyler here back once again with another video. Today, it's one of the last videos of the year on this channel. It is the top five games of the year of 2018. I have been <coughs> anticipating this video for a while, making this in the sense of I've been thinking about what the fuck I'm going to put on my list and where I'm going to put it. And usually, I have a set idea of this is the game of the year, and oh, definitely, look, these are great games, and this is definitely game of the year. This was the hardest decision I've ever had to make in terms of what game I think is the game of the year, but I've made a decision. And without further ado, I'll get into talking about much of that later on. But before that, we've got the other four games to go through. So we're going to start off by doing that, by going through the five favorite games of the year, from 5 to 1, because uh, that, that's the order people tend to do these lists. Also, I just want to point out the fact that 2018 has been such a phenomenal year for video games. It's been one of the best years in recent memory, probably the best year for games since 2010, 2011, if not better than that, maybe even since 2007. Uh, it's been phenomenal. It's been absolutely phenomenal, and by far the best year for games of this console generation, so... I'm excited to put this list together and talk about the awesome, awesome games of 2018. There's a few disappointments through the year, uh, but I played quite a lot of games by the end of it. I've been spending the last couple months just catching up, playing all the games that came out. And the only qualifiers for this list is they had to come out in the calendar year of 2018. There were some games I played this year that I'd never played before, but they didn't come out this year, so they wouldn't make the list. Um, but this is the top five games that came out this year. Okay, without further ado... Let's do this. Starting off at number five, we have Celeste. Celeste, from the publisher Matt Makes Games, came out in January of 2018. It is a platformer indie title. Now, many of you probably think, well, Tyler's just trying to look hipster, trying to look cool. No, I'm telling you right now. I played this game about a month ago for the first time when it was nominated for Game of the Year, and it is absolutely amazing. It is one of, if not the best platformer I've ever played in my life. It tells great stories, the characters are great, but most importantly for me with any platformer is it has incredible level design. It's got simple gameplay mechanics where you don't have to overthink what you're doing in the moment, but it's so challenging in trying to figure out with these simple mechanics, how in the hell am I supposed to do this? And you're just trying to figure that way through. It's an incredible, incredible level design. It was a great, perfect, like, 8 to 10 hour length for a game of its kind. With having a great set of story and characters in amongst that, the soundtrack as well is incredible. Celeste is a beautiful, beautiful game. And definitely deserves to be in the top 5 games of 2018. And if you haven't played it, it's not that expensive. Support great indie titles like this. Go buy it. It's on PS4 and Xbox One and I believe PC maybe as well. But definitely PS4 and Xbox One. So go play it. Coming in at number four is a game I wasn't even anticipating this year. A game that sold me in its last E3 demo this year. That is Spider-Man PS4. It is what an amazing superhero game. It's, it's what an amazing game, of course, but one of the best, if not the best, superhero game I've ever played. It's between that or one of the Arkham games. It, you know, I might actually prefer Spider-Man better. Or maybe since Spider-Man 2. I mean, I don't know. Look, Spider-Man PS4 is incredible. It's an amazing game. It has a great story and it doesn't tell it just like any video game. It feels like you're watching either a Marvel TV show or a Marvel movie just in game form. Because it really delves in to the comic book nerds out there. Of Peter Parker and all the supporting cast are incredible. It's well performed. It's, it's well written. It's a great length. It's not too long for a game of its kind with its you know, sandbox open world of New York City, and I liked that, you know, in 25 hours I platinumed the game, perfect, you know, I had a great time playing it, and then I put it down. It is a great setup and launch pad for future superhero games from Marvel, it just makes me think of what else Marvel can do in video games now, not just on television and not just in cinema. I would love to see, why can't there now be a Marvel video game universe they make out there? Why not? And I would love to see another Spider-Man game by Insomniac. I'm sure they're already developing it. I'd love to see a Captain America game. I'd love to see an Iron Man game. And it's because of how good this game was 
that I want all of those things now in the future from Marvel in video games. And this was an incredible game. I absolutely adored it, especially when I didn't think I would even like the game when it was in the build up and the trailers. And I thought, look, I just, I feel like they're showing us to make it look better than it is. I feel like it's not actually going to be that good, but it really was that good. Coming in at number three was a game that I didn't play on release. I actually waited a few months. It was only about a month ago that I played. Number three, Detroit Become Human. And Detroit's a game that I'd never played one exactly like that. That's very cinematic. It's very much like you're watching a movie that you're just kind of an interactive movie or an interactive television show. And you play between three different Android characters in this universe in Detroit. And I just, the, the what it does with story is, incredible but what it does with its characters is, is more incredible right because i felt non-stop throughout playing detroit become human my choices mattered every choice i made mattered i really felt like i had to be super careful and know that i wanted to do what i wanted to do in every decision some decisions you didn't have time you had to make it quick but some decisions i was sitting were there walking around the area that the chapter was in and i thought man i I really have to think about that. I really want to make the right decision here for these characters. I got attached to the characters. They were all incredible. Each of the stories had their own different layers and things I loved about them. And they were well balanced in the way they all ended up converging together, at least for me, because I know the stories go different for everybody. It was great. It was so, so great. And I would love to see this universe built upon and see if there is a next chapter for any of these characters or at least for the storyline that happened in Detroit Become Human. Uh, I, you know, I'd never really played a game this story-driven, this cinematic. I'd never played a game from this developer before. So for me, it was a new and unique experience. And it was one I'm going to remember for a very, very long time. And again, being a PS4 exclusive, the same with Spider-Man is crazy what Sony has done this year in particular. They're always, this generation, have just been killing it with video games. But this year in particular, it's unreal. And we haven't even got to the best part of what Sony have done this year. All right. <clears throat> now, if any of you know me, which I'd hope some of you do, you know what the top two games are. You know what the top two games are on this list. And picking between these two games has been one of the hardest things ever. For the last three weeks, I have been changing my mind back and forth between which one I think is the better game, which I prefer, which to me is the game of the year. And it wasn't even until two hours ago that I decided on it. And that's why I'm recording this now, because I finally decided on it. And I've said, I said to James the other week, oh no, I've, I've decided on it, but then I changed my mind again, I changed it again. I was two hours ago, going to call it a draw. Two hours ago, I literally said, to, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I said, I can't pick. I cannot pick between these two games. They are the two, these aren't just the two best games of the year, ladies and gentlemen. These aren't, these two games are so far ahead of every game this year, so far ahead, as it is. But these two games are also my two favorite games of all time. Of all time, these are my two favorite games. They are 10 out of 10 masterpieces. And I just wanted to pick them both because I honestly, getting anxiety trying to pick one because I'd pick one and I'm like, no, 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 because this one for this reason, this one for that reason. Look, I thought it'd be a cop out that my friend told me, no, that's a cop out. You can't pick both. And I'm like, it's my list. I can. He's like, yeah, you can, of course, but come on, which is the game of the year, which is the better game. And, and I thought about it and I've decided what I'm going to pick. Now, let me be very clear. These not only are the two best games of the year, as I said, they're not only the two best games I've ever played. When I give you one and two, just know that they are this close. They're this far away from every other game, but together they're this close. So don't think that I think what I say that is number two, I don't think is nearly as good. They are this close together. But there's one that I just think deserves game of the year more and is overall just the better designed and developed and directed game so ladies and gentlemen without further ado coming in at number two for games for me of 2018 and really when you look at it 
number two games of all time for me is Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 1 is my favorite narrative story of all time and Red Dead Redemption 2 took that on and is now my favorite narrative story of all time. It took a story I cared so much about, told the prequel to it in a way that is un indescribably perfect. It is better than what is number one in terms of narrative. I think this is the best narrative of any game ever. I had every emotion throughout this game. I adore all the characters in it. I adore the storyline, how it connected to Red Dead Redemption 1. I, this game was everything I wanted. This was everything I wanted and more. It was a trailblazer in so many ways for realism in open world games and storytelling games. I, this is this is a masterpiece of a game. This is an absolute achievement in gaming and game design and game development. What Rockstar have done with Red Dead Redemption 2 is, is incredible. The only thing is, it's not perfect. And when I say it's not perfect, like, there are things with the shooting, third person shooting mechanics that aren't perfect, that are janky, like, it's just, when it comes to being the number two best game I've ever played, there's just a couple little things I'm like, oh, that could have been better, this could have been better, uh, this annoyed me a little. Where it's like, 99% of this game is perfect. This is 1%, I'm like, yeah, but this, but that. I don't want to dwell on that, The I'm just saying that because the best game this year to me doesn't have anything, I, I don't have any criticism for it. I just don't. Is it as good of a story as Red Dead Redemption 2? No, Red Dead Redemption 2 has that. It has the best storyline. Uh, and it scores incredible. Everything about Red Dead Redemption really is, is just incredible. And I, and I love the game. And it, it made me go from a story in Red Dead Redemption and love it more. And now also make me... Because I didn't think I wanted it, needed any more from it. Now I feel like I need to know what happens now after Red Dead Redemption 1. Because I know it happened before and now I feel like it's just made everything more important to me as a storyline. In both games. But at number one, to me the best game of 2018 is... To me a flawless game. Other things that can be improved upon, yes. But it doesn't mean what can be improved upon wasn't great in it. It worked. It wasn't an issue. There were no issues in this game for me. This was a game from start to finish... Perfect. The first hour of this game is the best first hour of any game I've ever played. It, to me, is my favorite game of 2018. It's my favorite game of all time. It is God of War. And it is a franchise I have never even played before. I'd never played a God of War game before. James sent me a video, like a recap video, just to watch, like an eight minute recap, to, so I knew the story. Like, I know who Kratos was, obviously. I knew, I knew of God of War, but I'd never played a God of War game. I played this, and that first hour is the best first hour of any game I've ever played. And, it, and, it, and I say that in a way of game direction. As the, what it gives you in that first hour is the tone, the character, the potential for development for story and character, the gameplay, the world, the everything about this game is condensed as well into the first hour. And it gives you that. It gives you a taste of everything in that first hour and then just builds on it from start until the credits roll. It does not stop building on itself until the end of the game. I've never seen a game do that. I've never seen a game with, of its length especially do that. Its characters are amazing. Its performances are near perfect. Its world, environment, its tone, its scores, the, one of the best in video game history in my opinion. Its story just kept me enthralled from the beginning to end. I laughed, I cried, I, you know, couldn't get the smile off my face for most of the time I was playing it. I couldn't stop playing it from when I started until I finished. It is just a masterpiece. It is the closest game I've ever played to perfect. I platinumed the game, even the post-game stuff that people criticize, I think was awesome. It kept to the tone. And it's, what it's done is, is it's established something that I can't wait to see what's next. Not just for the next chapter, but for the next two chapters of this story. The next three games. This was a building block for the future of God of War, and it was an incredible start. It was the best start you could ever have. When it came to picking between Red Dead Redemption 2 and God of War, and the reason I kept going back and forth was like, 
Red Dead Redemption 2 has the story that is so important to me. The most important story in any video game to me. It had that. That was the X factor that put Red Dead Redemption 2 above God of War. But then with God of War, it had the fact that I'd never played a game like it. There is no game like God of War on PS4 is. I'd played Red Dead Redemption 1. And if you played Red Dead Redemption 1, and then you play Red Dead Redemption 2, it feels like you're playing Red Dead Redemption just eight and a half years later. With, of you know, eight and a half years of improvements. But it feels like Red Dead. So it wasn't like this experience I've never had before. It felt like I was playing Red Dead, which was a reason it, to put it up. But then that X factor of God of War had, I've never played anything like it before. It is a unique experience on its own. So that was the weighing act. And I couldn't, I'm like, well, what's more important? The thing that I've never experienced before or the thing that's that important to me? And I couldn't decide which was more important to me. So I had to just go by that game that maybe has this 0.0001% of flaws, whereas this game has zero. Th that's what I had to go. It was that minuscule of a decision between Red Dead Redemption 2 and God of War. And, I, and they are the two best games I've ever played. They are the two best games of 2018. I love them both dearly. And I can't wait to see what is next from both franchises. So that is my decision. And I won't kill Connor Club, though it hasn't happened yet when I'm recording this. I know Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to get kill Connor Club's game of the year. And that's totally fine by me. Because Ethan, George, James and me are all voting. And I know they think that Red Dead Redemption 2 is the better game. And that's totally fair. But for me personally, if I have to pick one, if I have to pick one going to my head, I have to pick God of War. I just think that was a perfect gaming experience. I went back and watched my reviews on both of these games and, and I could tell from what I said, you know, what I said about Red Dead Redemption 2 was it was this narrative that's the best thing ever. But with God of War, it's just, it, it was the game in every aspect that was the best thing ever. And that that's just what it gives it, that tiny little, like, m minuscule bit ahead. But man, I am so beyond just as a gamer my whole life privileged and just so stoked that I got to play these two games that in one year God of War and Red Dead Redemption 2 came out because they both deserve game of the year they both deserve it and I wish in that way they kind of came out in different years but they didn't they came out in the same year which man what a year what do you forget? Thank God Kingdom Hearts 3 didn't come out this year. I would have died of anxiety trying to pick between those three. But thank God next year I can put Kingdom Hearts 3 to 2019. I can push it back. Oh God, that dilemma's... Please don't be a game better than Kingdom Hearts 3 next year. I don't want to go through this again. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is my top five games of 2018. Celeste, Spider-Man PS4, Detroit Become Human, Red Dead Redemption 2, and God of War. An amazing year for games. There were some other great games I played. I've been playing Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's a great time. Not in my top five, but I, I've had a lot of fun playing it. The game I probably put the most hours in this year that I just play every other week just for, for the laughs is EA Sports UFC 3. I love that. It's definitely not a, yeah, as good of any of these games, but I've just played it that much that I feel like is worth mentioning. Um, but yeah, there, there, I played a lot of games this year. played a lot of games this year, and there's some amazing games this year, but... That's my top five, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm glad I got that out. I feel better now. Whew. Uh, I've got one more wrap-up video to wrap up this year that I'll be putting out later this week. And we're done by the time this video is out. Both the last Kill Connor Club and Kill Connor Clubhouse podcasts will be done for the year. And that'll be the wrap on 2018. I will be back in mid-January of 2019 uh, to be making videos on my channel again and podcast Kill Connor Club Clubhouse Cinema and all that amazing stuff so there's just one more video to come this week and then that's a wrap ladies and gentlemen let me know what your top five games of 2018 were thank you so much for watching this video I really appreciate it and I will see you all later this week thank you goodbye